Young Emmy is a much-loved 13-year-old Labrador who, shortly after being taken out for a walk, was struggling to breathe. But why? Now, it turns out it was a condition known as laryngeal paralysis, so we thought who better to explain the case than ARH Essendon surgical specialist Dr Simon Kudney. Simon, what on earth is laryngeal paralysis? There's various causes. The most common syndrome we see is in older dogs that have a degenerative condition that actually affects all nerves, but the reason it affects the larynx is that the recurrent laryngeal nerve that supplies the larynx comes out within the chest and tracks all the way up alongside the trachea all the way up to the, the larynx and it's actually the longest nerve in the body so it actually gets affected first in any sort of degenerative condition so when that gets affected their larynx doesn't open properly when they breathe when you when you breathe your larynx is supposed to open to allow airflow and in these cases they breathe in and their larynx actually collapses rather than opens because of that they can't get adequate airflow into their lungs and they become deprived of oxygen and they breathe harder, um, become more stressed so increases the amount of negative pressure through the larynx so their larynx collapses more and it becomes a sort of a, a vicious cycle of events where they become stressed and desperate to breathe so they breathe harder and harder and harder and the more they harder they breathe the more their larynx collapses in. Okay, so what causes this? Is it breed specific? The actual cause of the degenerative condition is actually unknown. It's common in particular breeds such as golden retrievers, labradors, sort of large breeds of dogs, usually when they're a bit older, and then can affect some other nerves in their body as well. So they can have signs of weakness in their back legs, dragging their back legs and, and so forth. But, but the, uh, the usual first manifestation is difficulty breathing. Uh-huh. And is it something that comes on suddenly? Not usually. I mean, usually there's a little bit of a history of increased airway noise, um, exercise intolerance. And so usually you have a bit of a, an indication and a warning sign that it is impending. They can have acute crisis episodes where they're, it's a hot day or they've been out running a lot and... Um, uh, they suddenly decompensate and then this vicious cycle is initiated. So, But normally you have a few triggering warning signs which people sort of put down to the dog getting old or he's, you know, he's, he's noisy, a bit, breathing's a bit more noisy but don't worry too much about it. But So you usually have some signs preceding an acute episode but once they have an acute episode then it does become a life-threatening crisis and in those situations, they need sort of ur- urgent attention. Yeah, well, we recently did a podcast with you, Age is Not a Disease. So is this condition age-related? Yeah, same, same thing. Okay. Yeah. So is this yeah. is this just with older dogs and certain breeds, or can it happen with, uh, let's say, puppies? Uh, it can happen in various breeds as a congenital condition where they have a, a congenital laryngeal paralysis and they can have signs at sort of um, 6 to 12 months of age. But the most common syndrome that we see is in the um, older dogs, sort of 12 or 13, Labradors, Golden Retrievers, large breeds of dogs. It can affect any breed, but they're the most common breed. Now, I know the surgery is quite technical, which is why we're doing this little podcast, but can you explain in a nutshell or maybe paint a picture for us of what you actually did? Yeah, okay. So the, the first thing is when a dog comes in in, in respiratory crisis, such as Emmy did, is, is to stabilise the dog, to sedate them, provide supplemental oxygen, and uh, many of those dogs will actually feel a lot better pretty quickly with that and in not all cases do they end up going to surgery. In Emmy's case they attempted stabilisation and really struggled to stabilise her and actually had to, to intubate her or place a endotracheal tube into her into her trachea so that was effectively bypassed her larynx and as soon as they did that her breathing improved but obviously that's not a long-term option. So what we did at surgery after she had, um, they had attempted to sort of stabilise her and remove the endotracheal tube, but every time they, they removed it, her symptoms came back very quickly. So what we do at surgery is firstly look down the larynx to confirm the actual diagnosis of laryngeal paralysis because there are other causes of upper airway obstruction. Older dogs can have growths on their larynx causing obstruction, but what we observe is a failure of the larynx to open when they breathe and it's often quite inflamed um, and once we're comfortable in the diagnosis we do a surgery called a tie back which is where we come from the side of the larynx surgically and uh, dissect down to the larynx and there's some cartilages in the larynx that we place a couple of sutures between to actually pull open one side of the larynx and, and tie it back as such so 
it basically opens up their airway on one side, so prevents that side from pulling in as they breathe and, and opens the diameter of the larynx so that they can breathe better. Now, we do have to be a little bit careful how aggressive we are in pulling that open, and, and, and the reason we only do one side is that if we, if we open the airway too much, there's an increased risk of them inadvertently aspirating food or water when they eat and drink down into their lungs and getting pneumonia and that's the biggest complication of the surgery and the reason we don't usually do a tie back surgery if a dog's a little bit noisy but is otherwise fine but obviously in, in cases such as Emmy um, we have no other option so um, we do the tie back surgery and usually the, instantaneously they can breathe better and, and are much much better in terms of their recovery from the anaesthesia. Fantastic. You make it all sound so simple. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's not a simple surgery. It's, it's actually quite fiddly to sort of get to the, the exact point where you need to place your sutures. And um, so, you know, it's, not, it's a technically fairly demanding surgery. It just... just knowing exactly where you need to be but um, it is a very rewarding surgery because you basically take a dog that can't breathe to a uh, to suddenly a dog that's that's breathing much better and happy and, and often go home the next day or so and much more active and acting uh, acting like they were a few years ago fantastic well emmy's mum and dad are uh, pretty happy they've sent us some uh, some great video which hopefully people have been watching as we go yeah. through and dr simon kudnick from arh essendon thank you very much for that great explanation of your surgical expertise <laughs> you're welcome thank you brian